Um, at the funeral, Tony sat up, he started talking, he got out the casket, and he came and sat next to me on the front row. Okay. <sighs> I was like, whoa, ain't you supposed to be like in the casket? <laughs> Dead, deceased. It's another one for real. K Chase, I call you for real because you're the truth. Hey everybody, this is just Kristen Chavis and I'm so glad that you guys are here with me today. We will be talking about the eight common dream types. And if you have any dream requests, if you have any requests for me to do a video, please comment below. I would love to do a video on whatever dream subject you have in mind. And also remember, if you need me to interpret a dream, you can always either comment below or you can email me. My email is in the about section. Okay, y'all ready? Let's go. First common dream type, teeth falling out. I know you probably have had a dream where your teeth have been falling out or something happened to your teeth. And um, usually, you know, growing up you would hear that teeth falling out meant that somebody was going to die or something like that. And it has nothing to do with that. Dreaming that your teeth are falling out means that whatever is going on in your life, you feel like it's out of control that you can't handle. Okay. Our teeth are a major part of our body like it's a, your teeth say a lot about you but your teeth if you look in the scripture represents your strength so if something is happening to you in your personal life remember dreams are always about you and you feel like you just it's out of your power it's out of your control and there's nothing you can do about it you may have a dream where your teeth look a little ugly or they're actually like falling out of your head okay all right next dream type wedding dreams so wedding dreams definitely are um symbolic of our relationship with christ okay because we are the bride the church and he's our groom so anytime you're having a wedding dream it doesn't mean that um you're about to get married or you're supposed to get married to this person whoever you're marrying in the dream it's all symbolic Okay, and I've had many wedding dreams where my dress was looking a little crazy or like one time my booty was out in the in the dress. It was a beautiful dress on the front, but my, my rear parts was out. And then just, well, that wasn't going to fly, honey, walking down the aisle. And, um, but what God was trying to convey to me is I was doing a little bit too much. Your relationship with the Lord is an intimate relationship. It's a close relationship, okay? And if you're his bride, male or female, you can be God's bride. We're the church. He desires to draw away with us in secret, in prayer, in worship. And when you start letting other things in your life get in the way, you'll start to have dreams about weddings or like you're about to get married and something goes wrong. And that leads us into the next dream, which goes with the wedding dream, which are sex dreams, okay? Sometimes you'll have sex dreams, and it may, if you're married, you'll have dreams that um, you and your husband are trying to be intimate or are intimate. And if there's anything getting in the way, keeping you guys from doing the act, that's also um a warning or a sign that something's getting in between you and your relationship with the lord because intimacy always reflects back to christ okay um because the closest the most intimate thing you can have is a one-on-one relation one-on-one -on -one relationship with a person if you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the person, especially if it's physical, that is the ultimate sign of love for that person to give your body to that person. And like Christ, he gave his body to us. He gave his body to be sacrificed so that the whole world may be free, so that the whole world uh, may be free from sin and we have a right to eternal life. So having sex dreams does not mean you have a lust problem. Um... And I'm talking more detail about what those people can mean. Okay. Um, if it's a female, it's your creative side, prophetic side. If it's a male, it's um, your leadership side, your thinking side. 
um, pastoral side uh, and things of that nature. OK, that means that you're either being with intimate with it or you're struggling. If you if it's not going through with the act, that means you're struggling to be close to that thing. But um, many times a sex dream just comes like right after, especially if it's the act of intimacy actually happens. It comes right after you've actually been um, flowing in that particular area really well. And God is telling you, hey, you're doing a good job. You're really close, intimate with this gift or thing. OK, um, and I tell people about this because is to help people stay out of sexual sin because dreams can feel very real and the, depending on who you were intimate with in the dream sometimes it's people we know it doesn't mean that you should be looking at them side eye thinking about what y'all can do you need to look at it from a mature spiritual standpoint and say okay what does this person represent and what is god trying to convey through the message same thing with wedding dreams doesn't mean that you should get ready ready for the for a wedding Ooh, that was a tongue twister doesn't mean that you should get ready for a wedding um like i did i started shopping for wedding dresses about 10 years ago and the lord wasn't trying to tell me that he was trying to tell me hey you didn't let this other person get in the way of our relationship and we were on a good path a good plan and this man ain't even your husband no way so you don't even need to be fooling with him like that but i'm gonna use him as a symbol in your dream because of the way you feel about him okay so always remember or look at the people in your dreams as symbols and think about how you feel about that person or what that person means to you when you see them. OK, and that'll help open up the dream world tremendously for you. OK. All right. So the next one is driving your car. And we've talked about this before. There's a dream. Uh, there's a video with more detail about car dreams, but your car represents your life or your ministry, where you're going in life. And depending on who's driving your car allows you to know who's driving you. Okay. If you, if somebody's driving your car and they can't see or they're blind, that is not a good sign. Okay. Um, if you wreck your car, that lets you know that either you just made a decision that's about to wreck your life or you're about to make a decision that's about to wreck your life. Pray about it. See, always look about, look at what's happening around your life at the time of the dream. When I write down my dreams, I write down as many details as possible. And I also put in parentheses what I was dealing with the night before, the day before, the week of, just so I can kind of have a filler on what God is trying to tell me in that dream, okay? Next one, seeing a deceased loved one. All right. Um, many times, you know, uh, people feel like their deceased loved ones are guardian angels and things of that nature. But when you step over into a, a new spiritual realm or spiritual maturity and you start to understand that your loved ones represent more than just you seeing them in your dreams, sometimes you see them for peace and those are healing dreams. And we'll talk about that. Uh, most of the time, if you see your deceased loved one for peace, you'll probably cry in that dream. OK, and that's a healing dream. God is allowing you to process that grief and that emotion. But if your grandparent or mother or father or whomever you see oftentimes in your dream, um, if they were a great influence on you spiritually, then they probably represent the Lord or your calling. Okay. Um, when I see my grandfather, even before he was um, deceased, I knew that was the Lord because he's always been, um, he's a father to me. Okay. So he's always nurtured me, been patient with me, everything, all the qualities of the Lord, you'll see those qualities in my grandfather. So when I see him, sometimes he says something, sometimes he doesn't. But when he's in my dream, I know I should pay attention. OK. And the same thing for my grandmother. I had to realize because my grandfather and my grandmother are married. And when you become married, you become one. They were one and the same. And the beautiful thing about God is, is that he can appear in your dream as a male or a female. OK, because he is God. But. 
my grandparents are one, they're one unit. So he can appear to me as either one, you know? Um, and sometimes not everybody had their grandfather. So maybe they just had their grandmother and she was a great influence on your life. And she was full of wisdom and she was a nurturer and she was kind. She will represent the Lord. Okay. So I know you, you love seeing them in your dreams and like, Oh, they came to visit me. And okay. That's cool. But look at it beyond that. Look at it as, okay, this is the Lord and he's trying to get a message over to me. Okay. Um, in a casket. Whoa. Okay. So I've, I've heard people who have dreams that they were in a casket. Um, their loved ones, family members were in a casket. Um, it does not mean that they are literally going to die. Okay. What it means is that whatever's in that casket and whatever they represent is either being brought to death, um, has died and it needs to stay dead or you're allowing it to die and God really wants it to live. Okay. So if it's being brought to death, usually it will be in, if it's an unknown male, that's your thinking, that's the analytical side, that's the always having to process and always having to know type side, okay? If it's an unknown female, that's your um, prophetic, when I say prophetic, that's like your spiritual gifts, um, creative gifts, the creative side of you, okay? If it's someone you know, you need to definitely think about this person's personality, and what they represent to you okay one time i saw my cousin tony in a casket okay tony's still alive this happened a few years ago okay um at the funeral tony set up he started talking he got out the casket and he came and sat next to me on the front row okay <sighs> i was like whoa ain't you supposed to be like in the casket <laughs> dead deceased and okay i'm like okay lord what are you trying to tell me okay my cousin tony he's very, he's highly intelligent he's a thinker serious thinker very smart and at the time in my life i was overthinking and over analyzing and trying to figure out how god was going to work this thing out because i know god had told me not to work and god had told my husband not to work so how are we going to take care of ourselves and pay for our bills? Of course, that, that's a natural thing to worry about, okay? And I had this dream, and the Lord was like, look, I got this. You need to stop worrying. You had let that part of you die, which I did, because there were times, you know, where I was, okay, I'm walking in faith, and I know God's got me. But then things started to look a little shaky, you know, the cutoff notices and stuff started rolling in. And that's when my faith started to waver. OK, and when my faith started to waver, that's when my cousin rose up in the casket and started talking. OK, that's what that represents. Doubt. All right. And he came and sat next to me. So basically, God was just telling me, you know what? You need to chill out. All right. Um, so that's what the casket dream means. It doesn't mean that somebody's going to die. All right. Last one in the kitchen. Many times you um, people will have dreams where they're in a kitchen or something's happening in the kitchen. A kitchen represents your relationship with the Lord. How can this be possible? OK, in a kitchen, there's a lot of things that happen in the kitchen. The kitchen is a mandatory part of your life. It is an essential part of your life in the kitchen is where you cook and where you clean. OK, and sometimes we wash clothes in the kitchen because my washroom room is in the kitchen. Um, so in the kitchen where you cook and clean, you prepare your food. Your food is your represents your spiritual food that you put in your body to feed your spirit. OK, the plates and the dishes are what you eat off of. That's whatever, whatever happens in life, whatever you feed your spirit with or put on your plate, you know, that's what you eat off of and that's what has to be cleaned 
you know, and you have to clean dishes daily or things will pile up. And the same thing with your spirit. You have to cleanse your spirit daily. You have to break links daily because you come into contact with all sorts of people, all sorts of things. This world is dark. It's grim. And there are people in the psychology world that call themselves empaths. And that's just people that are just sensitive to things in um, the spiritual world. We call that discernment. And you can feel and sense things in the room. Okay. So that means that you're connecting with those things. If you are connecting with those things, how will you disconnect? Okay. If you don't disconnect, you're going to have all kinds of wires and connections with all kinds of people, places, and things. And you're going to have trouble sleeping at night. Or you're going to feel the weights of that. You're going to feel the heaviness of that. And that'll make you not want to be around anybody. But we have to live in this world. We have to socialize. We have to do things. So what do I do every night? I break links. I break spiritual links. And um, I will list the prayer in my, in my uh, description. I'll put the prayer in my description. If you want me to send it to you personally, just let me know. All right. But uh, and I'll also post the. I have a video of it. I'll post it. Uh, it's also on my Instagram and my TikTok. Um, but I break links, I break spiritual links and you have to do that. But also, um, this is why the kitchen represents your relationship with the Lord is because our relationship with the Lord is dependent on what we put in, what's coming out and what's being cleansed. Okay. And if those dishes aren't being cleansed, that means that spiritually, a lot of things are piling up in our lives. And we're having trouble managing it. Okay. So those are the top eight dreams <laughs> that some people may have. If you have something, have a dream that's not listed in this list, please comment below and I will make a new list for you guys or I'll make a new video for you. All right, guys, this is just Kristen Chavis and these are the top eight common dreams. I'm so glad you guys were here with me today. Make sure you share this video, comment, like, and subscribe. All right, see you guys next time. Bye. Chavis.